Welcome back to Saturn's Kitchen. Today we are making a caramelized chipotle burger. All of the ingredients you will need is listed below in the description box, so let's get into it. First and foremost, you are going to want to start off by marinating and seasoning your meat. And I mean seasoning beyond black pepper and salt. We are going to add some actual flavor. So because I like my meat lean and healthy, I am using an extra lean quality that is 96% beef and 4% fat. If you are using anything that is under 93% lean, did the cow really have to die for you to eat that burger? But all jokes aside, the less fat percentage that your beef has, the less oily it's going to be when it cooks down. So now to flavor your meat, you are going to want to throw in a half teaspoon of paprika powder, followed by a half teaspoon of garlic, then another half teaspoon, but this time it's going to be onion powder. one teaspoon of adobo a dash of chili powder so about a fourth teaspoon and some black pepper So once all of your dry seasoning has been added in, you are going to want to massage the meat and go ahead and mix everything together, combining all of the ingredients. So once everything is combined, add in your chipotle peppers. So specifically add in one teaspoon of the sauce from the can and then one pepper that has been diced. To prep your burger for cooking, you are going to want to create some circular patties and you could determine how small or large you want your patties to be. After your burgers are made, place it to the side and allow it to marinate. In the meantime, we are going to move on to the caramelized onions. So because your onions will be reduced during caramelization, I would recommend using two whole onions. However, I did not have two holes. I had one and a half, therefore that is what I used. Though poorly demonstrated, you are going to want to try your hardest to cut your onions into thin like half moon shapes. So by the time I got to the second onion, I was crying. Is there a way to cut onions without shedding a tear? I'm asking for myself. So if anyone knows, please let me know how in the comment section. But back to the onions, so they don't have to be cut to perfection. At the end of the day, they are gonna be cooked down. However, try your hardest if possible to cut them into evenly pieces. Finally, after you are done dicing your onions, you are gonna wanna saute them in a pan. You are gonna first wanna drizzle your pan with some olive oil and evenly coat the skillet with the oil and because garlic is a vampire repellent throw in two tablespoons of minced garlic scratch that but to keep it real though I really like garlic infused in most of my dishes therefore I'm adding garlic why not after your garlic is added in throw in your diced onion which is gonna cook down like spinach it looks like a lot now but by the time it's caramelized it will shrink into nothing. During the caramelization process, I would say mix your onions every five to seven minutes. Really, it's gonna do its own thing. Um, the water is gonna slowly start to extract out of the onions. 
and the onions will start to shrink and pick up color. 10 to 15 minutes in the process, you are gonna wanna sprinkle a few dashes of salt, which will be about a fourth teaspoon. Once it reached this light brown color, I was pretty happy with my results. However, if you want a deeper brown, you could allow it to continue cooking. After removing your caramelized onion, use the same skillet to cook down your bacon. After your bacon is cooked, save the bacon grease and clean out your skillet. So using a clean skillet, I am going to transfer some bacon grease saved from earlier onto the clean skillet and then cook my burger. Avoid this step if you are using beef that is under 93% lean. The reason I say this is because beef that has a high fat content will produce its own oils once it begins to cook down. And I will say cook your beef to your liking. I like medium well, some people like medium well. So cook your beef to your liking. Once your beef is cooked, you go ahead and top it off with cheese, your preference while it is hot or you don't have to add cheese as you can see i am poking the burger and this was just my way of checking to make sure that it was cooked to my liking i don't do rare burgers um, so i do like to check however avoid over poking because you don't want to let out all the juice to create a nice spread for your burger you are going to want to drizzle some of that chipotle sauce from the can shown earlier and then add some mayo in and give it a nice mix After your spread is created, garnish your burger to your liking. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. And if you did, please leave a comment below and hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching.